The list of people who can use nootropics is so great that it's actually probably better and quicker for me to talk about people who can't use nootropics. If you're, and these are pretty much restricted to people with certain medical conditions or psychological conditions. For example, if you're epileptic, you shouldn't be using centrophenoxine. Um, and whilst if you've got something like mania, hypomania, bipolar, manic depressive, whilst it's not within my professional remit to try and advise you to use any specific nootropics because you already have a pre-existing mental condition and therefore should be under the supervision of a mental health care practitioner, um, and their authority supersedes my own, it's not uncommon for people with bipolar and things like that to benefit from nootropics. Ultimately, if you have a brain and you require that brain to perform and you don't have you know, a condition, then you will benefit from nootropics. So yeah, students, obviously. Yes, old people, pretty much obviously, though not as obvious as some people, because you get vascular related uh, senile dementia and something like vinpocetin or vinpocetin can uh, increase blood supply and therefore reverse some of those effects. Um, the list goes on. A poker player, okay, well, you know, you need to control your physical leakage, so something like Neurochill might work very well. Um, you know, you uh, stockbroker, again, high pressure work environment, you want to chill out at the end of the day, but you also want to be focused during the day. So perhaps Neurostim during the day and a Neurochill, and then a bit more emphasis on the Neurochill at night. Um, I spoke to a, a commercial pilot the other day, and he seemed very interested in the uses of Neurostim and Neurochill. You know, want to improve performance during the day, want to reduce anxiety during the evening. And the list goes on. You know, the, again, I guess one subset of people who probably don't require this as much or use nootropics as much as other people are people who do manual jobs. Because I'm not trying to imply that their jobs don't require a degree of thought, obviously they do, and their jobs are really quite highly skilled, but the jobs are, they're less pressurized, they're less cognitive in origin, do you see what I mean? If you've got to lay a floor, it takes a lot of skill, but it also takes a lot of patience and um, methodical approach, you know, which doesn't necessarily require uh, neurostim. It would probably be a little bit of a waste. But then at the end of the day, if you suffer from stress and anxiety because your business isn't doing quite as well as it was last year, but you've got more financial commitments, then again, neurochill is gonna take that edge off. Um, medical professionals, you know, the medical professionals that I've met are quite happy to use anything they can get their little hands on. Ritalin, Modafinil, Adderall, all sorts of stuff. And yeah, you know, it's up to them whether they use it. They've got the knowledge to be able to, be able to make a purely informed adult decision. However, I would like them to think outside the box and consider slightly less toxic alternatives. I know that most doctors and medics think that medicine is a gift from the gods and has no side effects whatsoever. But often in the long term, this isn't true, particularly when we look at such psychoactive substances as uh, Adderall or Ritalin. Now, I'm not saying that we have a product that is as effective at boosting concentration, but when you consider the risk to reward, I would say our product stacks up very favorably for long-term use when compared to an amphetamine salt such as Ritalin. Anyway, commercial pilots, um, estate agents, uh, architects, you know, they want to be more creative, for example. Everyone that requires their brain to perform should consider nootropics, in my opinion.